Your local war chest is presenting America's greatest entertainers in an appeal for a drive that must not, cannot fail. The 1945 Victory Drive. Here is Mr. Orson Welles. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. There is a mound of warm soil under four years of jungle growth on Guadalcanal. There is a heap of sand under a fronded palm on Wake Island. There is an ice-bound tomb on the silent, fierce, cold waste of Atu. What price victory? Ask Bill and Jack and Joe. What price victory? the Kokoda Trail meets the sea on the jungle side of the Owen Stanley's, where our boys made their first offensive thrust against the enemy. Under the dank jungle of springtime south of the equator lies the grave of another unknown soldier, another unknown American kid who sleeps away the dreamless eternities. Nameless, but not forgotten. Ask him what price victory. There is a glacial plateau where September thunders down from the pole with a voice of doom. No proud tree leans against the wind. No flowering shrub clings to that rocky, ice-bound eminence. No window light beacons there. Through six long months of night, no blue ribbon of smoke curls lazy to the sky. Only the shrill wail of winter breaks the awesome silence of Atu. Only the ceaseless rhythm of a tired sea echoes from icy caves to sing his requiem. No, Atu wasn't a very choice piece of real estate. He wouldn't have selected it for the home he planned to build for his girl back in Laramie. But Atu was a hunk of America that someone had stolen in the night. An empty place in the patch of blue in old glory. So Bill died there to give it back to the land of the free. Ask Bill what price victory The waves washed warm the silver beaches of Wake Island while the kids sat there under fronded palm trees and listened to the reports from Pearl. The Japs were coming in tonight, maybe 10 to 1, maybe 50 to 1. But what's the odds to a United States Marine? The minor birds chattered crazily from the eaves of a nearby ammunition shed. The sun dropped into the sea behind them, splattering its golden afterglow across the western sky. Jack whittled out a piece of wood and hummed something about an apple tree and a girl back home sitting under it with nobody else but him. Then death spoke from the sea and sky and somebody said, send us more Japs. Once, twice, thrice. The tiny voice of Wake answered the throaty challenge of half the Japanese Navy. Send us more Japs, they chattered. Machine gun against a naval barrage. Jack never finished whittling that boat model. He died that night. Died to give his kid back to Keokuk the chance to whittle out something for himself in a free world. What price victory? Ask Jack what price victory. Then there was a kid named Joe. You know who I mean, your Joe, our Joe, G.I. Joe. He's the kid we sent out in 1941 to run an errand for us. He's the kid we sent out with our shopping list. Biggest shopping list in history. We sent him out and told him to bring back a decent world. And don't forget the change. Joe knows how much victory costs. 
He's the boy who bought it for us. Sometimes we felt like we were doing something to pay the price of victory. We gave up a little thought to it. Yes, but half the time, Joe didn't even take time to eat. We made the tremendous sacrifice of closing the bars at midnight. Joe didn't even bother to look at his watch. He just waited until dawn broke. Crawled out of his foxhole and started fighting again. We built a few thousand aeroplanes. Joe flew them. Rode them on a jagged streak of lightning to the thunder over Tibet to an unmarked, unlighted rice field in China. We built a few thousand ships. Joe sailed them. Through days of peril, nights of horror, with blasted hulls and prostrate masts, to bring the convoy into Murmansk. We built a half a million tanks and armored cars. Joe drove them right down the throats of the enemy, chased the desert rats across two continents, right back into their holes on the Limburger side of the Rhine. We moaned about the scarcity of nylon. Joe was glad we didn't have it that afternoon. His nylon parachute dropped him safely on the wounded meadows of Normandy. We gave our money, too. But Joe bought us a decent world. A world where free people can live and love and laugh. Where people everywhere can turn on the lights at night. Where ships are painted white again. Where bluebirds sing from the ramparts of forgotten gun emplacements. Where a robot is something kids laugh at at a circus. Where church bells and freedom ring. That's the kind of world Joe bought for us. And at what price? Only the tears of bereaved women and lonesome children can measure the cost of our liberty. Only the stout hearts of a brave people can estimate the meaning of a gold star in the window. What price victory? Only the men who bought it can add that column. Only the darkened vision of a kid who will never see again can read that staggering total. Only the resolute courage of a grateful nation can indicate the depth of its appreciation. And only a grateful nation can understand the price of keeping victory. There is no peace in a hungry world. The price of victory is the cost of food for starving, suffering kids all over the world. The price of victory is maintaining morale in our armies of occupation. Victory is laughing healthy kids in a secure world. Victory is a world which tolerant people forget how to hate. The price of victory is the protection of the things we fought for. And they'll be cheap at any price. Ladies and gentlemen, your contribution to the victory war chest is a part of the price you must pay for the kind of world you want. One of America's best-loved entertainers, a great singer, is heard next on your local war chest program. It's Frankie Sinatra. And now with the able assistance of Mr. Meredith Wilson and the orchestra, I'd like to do a very, a very significant song today, particularly today. It's called The House I Live In. I do hope you like it. And the people that I meet 
The children in the playground, the faces that I see, all races and religions, that's America to me. The place I work in, the worker at my side, the little town or city, where my people lived and died. The howdy and the handshake, the air of feeling free, and the right to speak my mind out. That's America to me. The things I see about me, the big things and the small, the little corner newsstand and the house a mile tall, the wedding and the churchyard, the laughter and the tears, the dream that's been a-growing for a hundred and fifty years. The town I live in the streets, the house, the room, the pavement of the city, or a garden all in bloom, the church, the school, the clubhouse, the million lights I see, but especially the people. That's America. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. There's a sense in which the only things in life really worth having are the things we give away. That's precisely, precisely what we've all been trying to say here this evening. In other words, if we want love, we give away love. And the more we give, the more it comes back to us. If we wish to possess friendship, the more friendship we give away, the more we have. Even in nature, this immutable rule gives blossom to the fallen seed and the kernel of wheat, which dies in the warm soil of April and becomes the golden harvest of September. The only things in life really worth having are the things that we give away. So let's give, not only of our money, that's easy, but let's give our hearts too. Let's give friendship and kindness and tolerance and understanding to everyone in need. Let's be friends to the suffering, starving, shivering kitties of our stricken European neighbors. Let's get aboard and give a hand of friendship to the men who sail our ships, to the boys who so recently have planted Uncle Sam's flag of occupation on the soil of our erstwhile foe. Let's be good neighbors to our needy at home, to the little boy who might go wrong, or to the girl who has missed the good way of life, to the ill, the aged, the homeless, and the fatherless. Now is the time for us to be generous in victory. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is here. The time is now. You have been listening to a program presented by your local war chest, reminding you the 1945 victory drive must not, cannot fail.